Good evening, everybody. This is Dolores Cannon with the Metaphysical Hour. And we're sure getting close to Christmas. That's what everybody's thinking about that, but it'll be here before we know it anyway. And it said on the news they're going to have a horrible snowstorm out in the east around Washington. So at least right here where we are in Arkansas, we don't have that yet anyway. It may come, but at least not yet. Okay, tonight we're just going to be talking. I'm going to still go over some of the things that we covered before that I didn't get to finish. But if anybody wants to call in, they're welcome to do it. The number, the toll-free number is 1-888-815-9756. 888-815-9756. Anybody's welcome to jump in because we're just going to talk about several things. Okay. Uh, and Julia's here again. Hello. <laughs> She's pretty good at helping out with some of these things because sometimes she'll get inspirations that add to the show, really. And if they step in, they step in. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we have been talking about the three waves of volunteers, and I said before that has really gotten a tremendous response. Now, Julie, do you know any more about the website? Not yet. No, I think they're still working on it. But I believe it was called, it's something like the three waves or something. Um, but they're working on making it more uh, visible. It was, it was in a place that was really hard to find. So they're working on getting it in a better place. But it's so, on Facebook. Uh, yes. It was on okay. Facebook. I do believe so. And it's just a matter of, we'll know it pretty soon. We'll have it all figured out. So. Because you mm-hmm. said that somehow it was hard to navigate the Internet to get to where you yes. put it. Yes. Uh-huh. And we want to make it more visible. Because we had so many emails from people saying, how can we talk to others out there who are like us, who don't want to be here and feel lost and they want somebody to talk to and just share things with? And I think it will be a big help Mm -hmm. because you're really not alone out there. There are hundreds and thousands of you. Right. But people are just afraid to talk to each other about it or talk to other people about it because they're afraid people will think they're weird. Well, aren't we weird? (laughs) No, we're the normal ones. (laughs) What is normal anymore, anyway? Yes. How about I get clients all the time, they're afraid to tell anybody about their paranormal experiences, even seeing ghosts or having psychic visions or what they think are UFO abductions or any little things even, they're afraid they're be considered strange and they're afraid to tell their neighbors or anybody. Uh, they, don't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I think a lot of times if they told somebody, they'd be surprised. The other people have probably also been having strange experiences mm-hmm. that they've hidden and they're afraid to tell people. So there's a lot more of you out there than you think. Right. Because I have them come to me and they'll say, well, there's some things I want to talk about and tell you that happened to me. I haven't been able to tell anybody because they're going to think I'm crazy. And they said, but if I tell you, you're probably going to think I'm crazy too. And I said, well, go ahead. I hear so much. And then they start telling it, and they said, you mean this is not freaking you out? And I said, no, I've heard it before. <laughs> <laughs> so at least it makes them feel like they're not alone in the world. Right. All kinds right. of weird stuff, but mm-hmm. other dimensions and everything. I think everybody's got a strange story to tell if you just um, you present it first. Well, and as this veil keeps thinning, and like what you were talking about, that incident over um, Norway yeah. was because of the thin veil, it was able to be seen, and you can explain that here in a minute, but, but it's like I think as that keeps happening... We're going to be seeing more things. We're going to be feeling and having more things happen, even if you're not one of these three ways in general, because we're all changing. The ones that have chosen to move on with everything, we're all changing, so we're all having some really cool, unique experiences. So, you know, it, it, everything can happen. <laughs> so, I mean, all kinds of things can make you think you're going bonkers. <laughs> but the the psychic abilities are returning. We've always had psychic abilities. They've always been there. We were born with them. That's part of our normal makeup. Yes. But, you know, with the way humans are, it just gets pushed aside. 
when you're a child, they always, the parents and everybody said, no, don't talk about anything like that mm-hmm. to anybody. They'll think you're crazy, think you're the devil possessed mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And uh, so instead of talking about, gee, mommy, I remember when I was the mommy and you were the baby, mm-hmm. things like that, or I saw something in my room last night, they just tell them, don't talk about it, and they push it aside. Mm-hmm. So a lot of us have it, but we've just buried it. But it's coming back. These abilities are starting to surface right now. Yeah, we're reconnecting to what we had before, and then it's building on top of that. So mm-hmm. it's like you have your natural, whatever was there before, and then it's going to keep getting more and more and more as we get used to it, and that becomes our new norm. Then we will have more things uncover, and I think it's cool. I mean, it's like, what else? Come on, bring it on. <laughs> so. Yeah, because a lot of it, after the more you use it, and it's like riding a bicycle, the more you practice it and use it, then it becomes more and more natural to where it won't bother you after a while to have right. these intuitions and feelings and things. No, it becomes very natural. And, I mean, at the beginning, it's natural to question. It's natural to question everything about it because we are a society that has to prove and and we don't just believe stuff just for the sake of believing it. We have to have it all quantified and qualified and everything. So I think that's a natural step we go through to um, discern and, and to, to make sure it's okay. But then once you get through that and you get to the trusting part, mm-hmm. Then you just know. I mean, and it's actually, it goes from a thing of, okay, I know this is real and I know this is, you just know that you know that you know, and you're not really sure why you know. You just know. And mm-hmm. and it's just something that becomes second nature. And it's, it's like, well, of course it is, and you know. And don't know where it came from. <laughs> so. But you get so used to doing it that it doesn't matter if somebody else doesn't do it or not. It's yours. And right. You just use mm-hmm. it. Right. But it is Mm -hmm. becoming more and more natural, and more Mm -hmm. people are waking up to these things. Yes. And I think that's very important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what you were talking about, that spiral over in Norway, I don't know if a lot of people saw it on TV or not, but I thought it was really beautiful. They had it on CNN, and uh, it looked, it's a black sky, it looked like a galaxy. The way the, you see the galaxy from a distance, it was spinning. It was actually moving, and it had a center and all the arms going out just the way a galaxy looks. And it was really beautiful, and it had a way a beam shot down uh, from it. And they were calling it a spinning wheel, and the, uh, they were saying the astrologers, the I mean astronomers, the uh, scientists, nobody knew what it was. And first they were saying, well, they were blaming it on the Russians, that maybe the Russians had shot a missile off, and that's what it was. Well, how many missiles has Russia shot off, and they've never had an effect like that before. But nobody knew the explanation. Then I think it was a few days later, mm-hmm. they came out and said, that's what it was. Russia shot a missile off, and that's all it was. I think it was, it was a misfire or something. It was something happened with this missile. And that's and what so. made it have this beautiful yeah. spiral effect. Mm-hmm. Well, I just did Dr. Valerie's show just a few days ago, a few nights ago, and she's also with VBS. And she brought this up. Mm-hmm. And she said from what she was getting is that was just a made-up story. You know, they're always trying to quiet people down. Don't ask too many questions. Don't ask. Don't, uh, mm-hmm. ask you know, don't make waves. They were, it was a made-up story to calm people down, and she said what she was getting, it was a portal mm-hmm. because she said she's seen these things before where there were portals that opened up. And she said if that was a huge one, it would have been big enough for a whole fleet of uh, UFO ships to come through. Mm-hmm. It was enormous. But there again, we are, the, the dimensions are becoming so close to our Earth that they're the veil is thinning, and we're mm-hmm. seeing them more. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, I think to... this is a glimpse of what we will maybe start seeing and start. I mean, I mean, really. I mean, let your imagination go with this as to what would be. I mean, all these things are laying all around us, and there's so much around us that we are not privy to because of our limited vision. And then, okay, this lifts, and we can see through, let's say, several dimensions and stuff. I don't know if there'll be any limit or what, but let's say we can. I mean, just let it go wild with your imagination. What, what's possible? I mean, that is one thing, you know. It was it's just, beautiful. Uh, uh-huh. But, yeah, it may be that 
you were able to see the doorway into the next dimension for the first time. It's always just been invisible. For those of you who don't know what portals are, I've written about them. I think it was in Convoluted Universe Book 3 uh, about portals and windows. And a portal is supposed to be something you can go through, you can travel through to go through time or go into another dimension. And this is the way the ETs travel. They go back and forth through portals Mm -hmm. and through dimensions. They don't have a certain kind of fuel for their craft to go so many miles an hour to get out to that next star. It's done with lowering the vibrations and frequencies of the craft, just like in uh, Star Mm -hmm. Trek when they just say, Mm -hmm. Engage, Mm -hmm. and there they go. But the uh, people have gone back and forth through these portals also, and they're used for time travel and for interdimensional travel. But that's a portal. There's also windows. You can go through a portal, but a window is one that you can see through into the other dimension, and people have reported things like that that are very weird. But you can see through, but you can't travel through. And in one of my sessions, it was interesting, uh, they said they had portals that you would move, and I didn't know you could move a portal. Mm-hmm. I thought it was stationary right. in one place. Right. And they said, oh, no, we can move them if we have to. Mm-hmm. So I'm always learning something new that it is possible to move a portal from one place to the other. But these things are happening all around us. We just don't know it because we're so concentrated on our physical, concrete world that we can see. But they're there, and that's why I think it's happening. The mm-hmm. veil's thinning. Mm-hmm. We're, things are changing so much with the vibrations and frequencies. Mm-hmm. Maybe now we're going to be able to see these portals. Exactly. Exactly. And that's exciting because it's, that's like a glimpse of what we're going to be seeing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just... Do- Dr. Valerie thought <laughs> this was a must have been a huge one. So mm-hmm. we'll have to see now mm-hmm. what that means. But it makes sense the government's always trying to cover things up. They're so afraid that things are going to freak us humans out if we know what's really happening out there. But they don't realize they're dealing with a new human, (laughs) an evolved human, an evolving human. (laughs) And we're not going to be frightened by the not. No, we don't get scared so easy. You know, and that's the biggest thing. I mean... See, this is exciting. This this is exciting. We're on the front row. We have front row seats to, I mean, that's why we're here. We have front row seats to this whole huge theatrical thing here, you know. We have to be here. And it's, I don't want to get scared and hide in the closet, you know, and hide in the whatever to not see it. We came here to see this mm-hmm. and to experience it. So let's get excited and be happy about it. <laughs> you know? Because I've had so many strange things that people have told me, and then when I tell them about dimensions and uh, frequencies and things, it makes them feel better because they understand Mm -hmm. maybe this is what it is. Right. We don't have the answers to everything. No. no. But at least we're still searching, and there's a lot more out there than we know. Well, we can't define things by what we have always known. I think right now especially we're moving into – a whole unknown area, and so it's really that's what's like. It just, just, just kind of stay open, and and I mean that's where fear comes in. Is we're trying to hold on to what we know, but we really have to let go of that because that's, you know, I think you'll have an easier time with everything by letting go of of your expectations or your things that worked in the past, <laughs> you know, because it's all new now, and it's just and you kind of throw it out the window and then just go with it, just flow and and just go with it. See, that's what they've told me. One of the big things you have to do now that things are changing and we're moving into the new earth is to let go of fear. Absolutely. Fear Mm -hmm. is a paralyzing emotion. It's the strongest emotion a human has. And if we don't understand something, we're going to be afraid of it. But the idea is to let go of fear and ask questions. Ask lots and lots of questions. Like here again, the government, Mm -hmm. like with this Mm -hmm. other thing, they tell you things. A lot of the things they'll tell you is to make you afraid, to hold you in fear. And you've got to start thinking for yourself. Ask questions. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't make sense, ask lots and lots of questions and make up your Mm -hmm. own mind. That's the biggest thing, make up your own mind. If it still doesn't make sense, I mean, if you can't accept it, don't. Don't Don't. worry about it. it. Exactly. Don't worry about it. Just let it go. It's It's not the truth for you, whatever it is. You know, make sure you keep going until you find your truth. 
and and yes. you will. <laughs> your truth may not be my truth, but at least it's something you have come to with your own investigations. And then it can change. It can change months mm-hmm. later or a year later. You might find something else that you mm-hmm. believe in. Yeah, because we're constantly changing. We're evolving, mm-hmm. and, and our this is fine. That's what I meant by don't hang on to some of these. Uh, if, if it worked back here, it doesn't mean necessarily, and it probably did work. It was That doesn't mean it was any less valuable if it doesn't work here. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's okay. It, it, it worked back there. That's why it had its purpose. Now you're in another place. Mm-hmm. That's the evolving process. And yeah, what we learned as a child uh, doesn't serve us now. No. We've grown. We move on. What I know what I knew as a child, I mean, they, that child wouldn't understand me at all now because we're the same person, but yet we have changed and moved on. No, but the child brought you to where you are. That's it true. It was a very important part to get you to where you are. Yeah, so. that's why you can't go backwards. No, and that's why you also can't deny you know, that part of you. I mean, it's a, it's a part of who you are, but you have, you have added on or thing, but there's no reason to stay with that one because it doesn't have all the answers anymore. No, <laughs> so. and we grow and we evolve. This is some of the people that come to me are still holding on to things that happened to them when they were a child, things that were done to them. And we all have things that are not pleasant. We all have uh, bad things that happen because mm-hmm. that's life. Mm-hmm. And some of the clients do. They're holding on to things that happened when they were three, four, five mm-hmm. years old, and they've never let it go. That's not good because you have to release it. You have to let it go. It's the only way to move on. You can't have anger about something that happened way back there. Right. And, it, and we're not saying... Uh, I mean, it, it might be very, very traumatic. It doesn't lessen... I mean, we understand it. It could be very, very traumatic, that doesn't lessen that at all. It means put it in its place. It brought you to where you are. <laughs> mm-hmm. Again, it had its place. You had a reason for it. You know, Learn from it and move on. Let yeah. it go. <laughs> Release it. Let it go. You have to forgive the people involved. That's one of the things uh, people tell me, well, I can't forgive them. You don't know what mm-hmm. they did to me. Mm-hmm. But you're only hurting yourself. You're not hurting them. And many times, some of the clients I see are older, Mm -hmm. and all the characters are dead. Right. And they're still holding on to this. Mm -hmm. But that happened way back then. I wonder if it could be it's a fear also, because if they let go of that, then it's an unknown. I mean, they know what they're dealing with by holding on to that, and then it's maybe a fear of, well, if I let that go, then what? (laughs) Then what do I have to worry about or what do I have to deal with? I mean, it opens everything up for them. But it can be the beginning of a whole new life. It absolutely is, but that can be scary to some people if they like to hang on. And that's where they have to let go, you know, if you really want to move forward. And so this is about the conscious conscious releasing, conscious creating, conscious movement, rather than just living your life on autopilot we're into a point now of you make every step consciously. We we are moving consciously. It's not all by accident anymore. <laughs> we are we are very much aware of what we're doing. And if you're not yet, you will be. And that's where we are. Mm-hmm. It's all about that. And it is about releasing, letting it go, and moving on. And I know it's not easy. We've all had bad things happen. But I always tell people, what did you learn from it? You look at the bad experience. What did you learn from it? If you learned one thing, that was the purpose of it. That was Mm -hmm. the reason. Absolutely. And if people say, well, I didn't learn anything, well, then you're going to have to go through it again. Well, they're not looking, obviously, because it happened for a reason. But, yeah, if you're still carrying around the drudgery of it, no, you probably didn't learn from it. And But it's still, it's not too late. You can still go back into it and look at it from a different point of view and find out what it was teaching you and stuff. And you're in a different vantage point now. You can probably learn it real fast and easy. Yeah. But, yeah, you have to figure it out, or definitely you'll be back. You'll be revisiting it. <laughs> so, Because I have clients that have drawn the same circumstances again and again and again in their life, and they don't mm-hmm. realize it's because they haven't figured it out. Mm-hmm. Once they do, they say, mm-hmm. oh, that's what it was trying to teach yeah. me. Now I got it. Yeah then they can move on. Well, that's that conscious, being conscious of it. See, they were acting unconscious. Now... The poor world. Look what the world is doing to me. Look what God is doing to me. Uh, 
Or you the don't. fact that they're going through several lives, still doing it the same way. That's just that, that's living unconsciously. Now they've chosen by coming to you or anybody or getting this awareness. I want to know where this is coming from and what I can do about. It. Now you're conscious about it, and now you make movement. And, it's like, and because okay. many of these people, this is what's making them sick. It's causing mm-hmm. all kinds of illnesses. And mm-hmm. why drag all that old junk and baggage and garbage around with you? Mm-hmm. It's better to get rid of it and move on. Well, like I said, that's part of the the ascension. Part of this this whole thing we're doing is to lighten up, lighten up, lighten up. Well, you can't lighten up and carry a, a barge with you, you know, and all these chains and bags and all that stuff. You have to let them go to be able to move mm-hmm. up. So, yeah, but this is all part of what we have to do now. And they've told me to tell this to the world, and that's what I'm saying it in all of my lectures now. Mm-hmm. This is getting rid of karma. Absolutely. Now is the mm-hmm. time. No more karma. Yeah. And and it can be rid of very quickly now. I mean, it doesn't have to. And that's, I think, what some people, I mean, once they come to this realization, to this point, then they all you have to do is, is just that releasing and that forgiving. And it's, you know, you can wipe it clean very quickly. You know, we're in a, we're in a really cool time right now. Yeah, it used you know? to be. It could yeah. take lifetime after yes. lifetime. Yes, but now it's, <laughs> I mean, it's all done within a very short period of time. Well, look at even 30, 40 years ago, yeah. we were dragging all this stuff mm-hmm. around with us, and it just took so long. But now it's time to let it go. Right. Because mm-hmm. we're moving into something truly fantastic. And you won't. the whole world is out there waiting for you, and you're not going to be able to step out and enjoy it and find what your path is as long as you're hanging on to this ties to the past. Well, and I think the only reason you're hanging on to it is because you're unconscious. I think as soon as you become conscious, you let that go because you realize that you have to do it to do this. Uh-huh. And, you know, so it just becomes, it, it all kind of just steps into play. So, so if you're still hanging on over here, it's because you're just not, you're not aware mm-hmm. yet of the whole process or what's there because it's just a natural process of it. And I was just thinking, too, a lot of these people, these they have these people in their life who have been causing them all this torment all their life, mm-hmm. and they're still there. Mm-hmm. That's because they haven't figured it out. Right. As right. soon as they figure it out, what that yeah. person is there to teach them, mm-hmm. uh, because that's all it is, they're mm-hmm. put into your life to teach you. Well, yeah, let's go one step further. You put them in your life you to teach did. you. You <laughs> did. Unconsciously, you don't know it, but before you came into the life, you set up the circumstances, mm-hmm. and they agreed to come in to be a mirror, mm-hmm. to be a test. Yes. And mm-hmm. uh, I had that just a few days ago in one of the sessions. They said there were certain people put into this person's life to mm-hmm. act as tests for them when they came mm-hmm. along. Of course, they didn't know it. They didn't realize it at the time, but there are people that crossed our path and, of course, the longer they stay in our life, right. then the longer they're there to test us. Test us or to teach us. To teach so, us. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But then when you understand it, those people will drop out of your life. Right. Yeah, because there's no more reason. They're not necessary there. anymore. Mm-hmm. Then you're ready to move on to the next lesson, which may or may not be easier. It may be harder, but at least it'll be different. One of your best ways to know now... As far as a test, that's kind of a, I guess they're both the same, but it's like you, you watch your reaction. And when you see that, that you're, one, reacting, because that's your indicator right there, it's like what is it that it's bringing up? Because that's, that's stirring emotions, that's stirring something from within. And so then it's like, okay, and then you just flip it around, and that's just like, okay, what are you trying to teach me? And it's out of that reaction that you can kind of see what it's, what's happening here. And you have to get real objective and real conscious about it. <laughs> all emotions so, removed. All emotions removed, yes. And reacting is, okay, mm-hmm. why is this person yes. pushing my buttons? Right. What is it about this situation? What is it, yeah, what is it you're trying to tell me? What, and, and you just, you, and if you have to pull way out, sometimes you have to get way away from it to be able to see it. You know, you may have to go out to the, outer realms of the universe, I don't know, to be able to really get a good objective view of it. Yeah. Do whatever you have to do to see it. And the fa- and the sooner you can do it, the better, because then you just move through that one faster, you know. I mean, it, it, it doesn't really matter how long it takes. It's just up to you and how long you want to take and live with this <laughs> situation. But 
Yeah, as soon as you figure it out, it does. It dissipates or it moves into a whole other um, scenario. It, either that person will leave or they will become, they will move into a different role in that in your life where they don't do that anymore, you know. But but if you no longer react, and I know this is not easy for some people. It's if not. You, but if you, <laughs> you no longer react, uh, they get tired of it. Mm-hmm. They're not mm-hmm. causing a reaction because to them it's a game. Well, once you figure out why you rea- you were reacting and you you deal with that, then you won't react because now you know the trigger in there. And so and there's no more reason. That was the only reason for the reaction was to get you to look at it and figure out what the whole thing was about. And so that's kind of, that's your best indicator. What was your reaction? And if you have a volatile reaction, okay, this is a big thing. This is something you got to deal with, mm-hmm. you know. If this is person's right in your face, you know, to show you. And it's usually a big mirror. <laughs> so, um, yeah, one of my things, I just talk to my higher self, what do you want me to know if I can't see it well enough? From like the I situation? Said, yeah, what is it you want me to know in anything, really? But that's another one. It's like, okay, what are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to teach me? Um, because that's where it's coming from. It's obviously you trying to teach yourself something. So. Yeah. You know, but, but the that, majority of us are just bogged down in, oh, poor me, I'm the victim, the victim uh, Well, that's role. number one, <laughs> to get rid of stuff, that stuff. Yeah, the victim <laughs> role, and uh, the whole world hates me, and everybody's out to get me, and all of this What's stuff. What's that one? Nobody loves me, everybody hates me, I might as well go eat worms. <laughs> 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 Something like that. <laughs> My daughter used to say that as well. <laughs> That's where you got it. Okay. I wonder where it came Poor from. Poor me. <laughs> I'll have a pity party. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, it doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> oh, I've had people sit on my couch in my office and go on and on and on, and they want you to, to pity them and feel sorry for them. Well, it got them, it, you know, they get stuff from it. So Yeah, but uh, it's time to stop well, all of that's that. That's the unconscious living. <laughs> yeah. That's so. uh, it's time to stop it all because mm-hmm. we're moving into a whole new thing. Mm-hmm. And when you do, boy, you'll see your life change. Mm-hmm. But to peep some people, that's scary. Well, that's what I meant by, you know, that that's what's scary about letting go of it because it's all changes or it all mo- opens up and it's like, oh, I liked it better when I was confined in my little my little pity party, you know. <laughs> so, that's and, that's familiar. Mm-hmm. But the uh, rest of the world out there, I don't know. And they don't it don't know what's out there. So some right. people it can't be scary. It's better to hang on. Mm-hmm. But anyway, it's, I'm trying to give you something to think about anyway. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's, that's what I do with my <laughs> clients. And whenever they're telling me all these things, I said, well, did you ever think of looking at it this way? And it's not mm-hmm. criticizing. It was just that they get so caught up in that viewpoint Mm-hmm. They haven't even thought of looking at it from a different yeah, direction. Yeah, you, you really have to look at it from a different direction. You have to look at it from the other person's viewpoint, or better, the best yet is above and totally objective of everything and look at the whole thing from every angle and and then see what it's teaching everybody, you know, because it's having repercussions and ripple effects and everything all over the place. So it's like, mm-hmm. what is it? Why did we all create this? We you know, did. I had somebody talking to me yesterday, and yeah, she gets a lot of uh, phone calls too <laughs> at the office. <laughs> and and he was saying um, something to that effect of, uh, well, this other person, you know, it's like they had. He, he was like, understanding the idea that he had created this to learn something from, but he but he then it was another stretch of his mind to realize that the other person also created this. And then on the other level, they were both deciding to play this little, to dance, this little dance together to both learn from it. And he's like, oh, and it's like, because it, there's a lot of orchestration going on in this. You know, it's like on the other level, you're going, okay, I want to learn this. Now, who wants to help me with this? And if somebody else has a similar lesson or whatever, somehow it's all orchestrated, and we all agree to help each other out and come in here and do these things, and and then we're all learning whatever it is we want to learn from it. and play our games and have our dances. <laughs> so. it's, it's just a game. Mm-hmm. That's what I always tell people. It's just to play on the stage. We're all actors dressed in our costumes to play this part. That's all your body is. It's just a suit of clothes, your costume. We're all playing our parts, and we're writing our script, 
As we go, a lot of us. (laughs) Yeah, we're the producer, the actor, the script writer, the director of our own play. So why don't we make it good? I don't know we can. (laughs) Yes, exactly. But we're writing it as we go along. We don't even realize we can change it as we go along. Conscious living. (laughs) (laughs) You can change it as you go along. Start writing the script you want. Write, Write it the way you want it to be. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what people don't realize. You can create the world you live in. You create your own reality. Absolutely. Um, You can have, you want to live in a negative world where things are awful. That's your your creation. And we just eat worms. Yeah, that's your (laughs) creation. If that's the world you want to create, because you create your own reality. Everything around there in your life, you have put there. Absolutely. Nobody else did it. You did it yourself. Yeah, yeah. harsh reality check. <laughs> and people are telling me, what do you mean? I didn't want to put all this stuff mm-hmm. in my life, the way the world treats me. Mm-hmm. But you did. You created it. And once mm-hmm. you realize you created it, you can uncreate it. Or create something different. To me, that, that makes more sense rather than uncreate it because that's like an unwinding. Yeah. Rather than say, okay, let's just start here and create something else. Create something different. Okay, let that one go and just go do something different. Mm-hmm. It's like getting off one ride and going on another, you know. But we, just... we do create everything in our lives. And once you realize that, the power you have, oh, you have tremendous power. Mm-hmm. You can have anything you want, absolutely anything, and you can create it because that's the law of the universe. And once you become aware of it, you can create your life. You can have good things. Mm -hmm. But you're just trotting along and letting the whole universe do it for you. Uh, Well, you're letting everybody else dictate how you're going to be. That's 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 unconscious living (laughs) again. But you bring mm -hmm. in these circumstances to learn from. And Mm -hmm. uh, if you finally realize it and tired of it, Let's create a positive mm-hmm. reality. Absolutely. And you can have absolutely anything mm-hmm. you want in your life. I mean it. We have done it. We do it all the time. Oh, what? and we've just barely, barely, barely scratched the surface of what we can do. You know, I mean, I know what we've done. Yeah. But we haven't done nothing like what we can do. And, but we're um, finding out it works. Well, exactly. And I think that just shows us, yeah. But but what I keep getting is like, if you only knew just how powerful you are, because you were just saying, you know, we're, we're very powerful. We are very powerful. We just won't, it, it's like that's scary to, I guess some of us are scared. scared afraid because, of our own power. Exactly, afraid of our own power. So that's why it's like we're doing it little bits and we limit ourselves because we're, we're like, well, I just don't know. So it's like, you know, fear of success as well as all the other stuff. But we are very powerful beings. And, and that's why I was, remember I told you I got before, We were talking to someone, and they were showing me this visual of how easy it is and will be for us to step into our power. And it was just an actual, just like a half step to the side. It's not any major thing we do. It's just like a little... It's a little shift to the... A little nudge. Yeah, yeah, a little shift to the right. It's like, it kept showing me to the right, and, and it's like you step into your power. It's we're that... It's that easy, and we're that close. And so, and step into who you really are, and who, and who you want to be, and what you want to be, and everything. <laughs> so, well, you you hit on something when you said sometimes we're afraid of success. Mm-hmm. People are. Mm-hmm. They'd rather stay where they are because they don't know what's going to happen. I wonder if they're afraid of it being out of control, because that's the feeling I just got. If I if I did create all these things that I'm wanting to create, it's like almost it's almost an overwhelming feeling of maybe I couldn't control it. So that's Mm -hmm. something I'm going to have to deal with myself because that's probably one of the reasons I sabotage myself is is a fear of lack of control because I'm a control freak. I don't have a problem admitting it. (laughs) I'll have a, what is a control freak anonymous here. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But, But, yeah, a lot of people are afraid of success because it would change their life for one mm -hmm, thing. And some of them are very comfortable with Mm -hmm. what they're doing. Yeah, but at the same time, they want these things, but like maybe it's um, you want them, but then you're afraid to have them. For whatever reason. Right. But material things are the easiest thing to create. 
Now, these are laws of the universe that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. When it's a law of the universe, it has to happen once you understand how it works and how you can manipulate it and use it. I was told the main reason we're here on Earth is to learn to manipulate energy. Mm -hmm. And energy is everything is made out of energy, everything. Everything. So they said once you learn how to manipulate energy, then you can create and you can create anything you want. That's the main reason we're here on Earth is to learn how powerful we are. We can. Mm -hmm. We can manipulate the energy to have anything we want. Mm -hmm. Now, physical things are the easiest to create. It's harder to have, they said, emotional things, happiness and stuff like that are a little harder. Well, uh, they'd be harder if if it's a vague thing. Which I, if you have something associated with a concrete that, thing, yeah, if you have something that represents that to you, and that's what you focus on, then that would come through, you know. But it's really the feeling, and so it's whatever, whatever do you have that feeling with? So then that's what you would focus on. So okay, but yes, you can create absolutely anything you have, you want. But the first thing you have to do is you have to know what it is you want. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of people tell me that. Mm-hmm. Well, again, you open everything up and go, okay, you can have whatever you want. It, what do remember, you want? It's, it, it's just the same thing. It's like, well, I think I'll just stay back here in my little world. You know, I, where I'm comfortable is all of a sudden, because that, that's overwhelming. And it's just like saying, okay, here you have access to a supreme being. What do you ask? I don't know. <laughs> you know maybe it's really not that important <laughs> anymore. And so it's kind of that thing. It's like, oh, I think I'll just shy away, you know. So. But first you have to know exactly what you want. Because it all involves a visualization. Everything starts with the thought. Mm-hmm. It starts with a dream. You have to have something that you really want to, mm-hmm. want to do, you want to have, you want to attain, whatever. Right. But you have to be able to see it in your mind in detail, mm-hmm. minute detail. The more detail you can put into this visual picture, the easier it is to have right. it. Right, and we were talking about emotions earlier, and if you can get emotionally involved with the picture, with the image, then that puts you in it. Like you say, you, you've got the detail because you, you're seeing it, but get yourself in it. How does it feel? How does it, you know, all of the things about it. If it's a car, feel the, maybe smell the new car smell <laughs> or feel the wind blowing as you're driving. Or, uh-huh. um, but you have to, when you're creating it, try to hear things. Yes. Mm-hmm. Smell things. Mm-hmm. Put as much detail into the picture as you can, and it has to happen because mm-hmm. that's the law of the universe. Mm-hmm. That's how everything is created. You send out the thought. You send out the dream. You send out mm-hmm. exactly what you want. It goes into the other dimension right. where it is tweaked or whatever and made into mm-hmm. a reality. Then it's mm-hmm. brought back. Right. Yeah, it's already created on the other dimension, and then it just comes back into the – what actually um, – if it's okay, if I I think it's Abraham, uh, the channeling. Um, yeah, they, what they say is uh-huh. it's manifest over here in this dimension, and it becomes your reality when you raise your vibration to that manifestation. So it's sitting there waiting for you, which is exciting because you realize it's already there. I just have to get myself to where I'm vibrating at the same rate as it is. You know, so it's like it's already there. But <laughs> you know? this is the main thing. First, you have to know what you want. Now, see, that's one of the things. That's why material things, money and all of that is so easy to attain because one of the laws of the universe is the law of abundance, which means there will always be enough for everybody. For anything that you need. You don't have to be worried about taking money or things away from anybody right. else. There will mm-hmm. always be enough for everyone. But first you've got to know what you want and be able to create it. Now, another thing... When you create this, don't worry about how you're going mm-hmm. to get it. Mm-hmm. Some people say, well, i got to do this and this and this to get this thing. Mm-hmm. No, because... <laughs> That's not your job. <laughs> if you do that, you are limiting them. And by them, these are the ones, mm-hmm. your well, guides, your guardian yeah, it's angels. the universe. You, you put it out there. Remember, it's already, it's already created on this other level. So yeah. now it's got to figure out how to get to your level and... That's done through various things. And if you start, like you said, if you start putting rules and regulations on it, you greatly limit it, and now, and you probably are going to sabotage it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, or, or definitely 
make it take a whole lot longer than what it could take. But you have to visualize whatever it is you want, object, job, whatever it is, you visualize it as already done. You see it as accomplished. You see the goal, Mm -hmm. what it is you want. You see the end objective. The end objective, that's a good way to put it, of what it is you want, what it is you desire, and fill it full of minute details. And then don't sit back. I've had some people say, well, then I'm going to have to do this and this and Mm -hmm. this to get it. Mm -hmm. No, let that part go. You will get guidance. I mean, if you feel... If, you, if something comes up and it's like, okay, you need to do this, well, then do it. I mean, that's your guidance coming in. There, there's going to be steps that may, you may need to do or take. Well, that's fine. You do those at those points. But you don't sit here at this end going, okay, this, 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 and this has to happen in order for my end objective. It's like, and one of the things I like to say, which kind of, I guess, reinforces to myself, my faith, is like, I don't know how you're going to do it. This, just, this is what needs to get done. And, you know, surprise that's, me. <laughs> that's what so. we, we always say all the time. Because if you're going to figure out this is what i got to do, you are limiting them. Mm-hmm. And when it happens, it will happen in ways you can't possibly imagine. They will, the things mm-hmm. they do, mm-hmm. because that's what we do now in our business mm-hmm. and everything, in our careers. We just say, okay, guys, here's the next project. If we have a time Mm -hmm. uh, limit, we'll say it has to be done by this time. I don't know how you're going to do it, but here it is. Do it. Right. And then we sit back and watch the magic. Right. And it is magic the way it happens. Yeah, and if you, it's it's actually fun to sit back (laughs) and watch how because you think it's going to go point A to point B to get to C. Not necessarily. It might go zigzagging and then go loop de looping and all this kind of stuff to get to point. C, D, E, and F or something. I don't know. But it's like, just sit back and just know all along it's going. I don't know what you're doing now, but I know you're going over here to this end objective that I have put out here. And it's just and just watch it. It's fun to see all the zigzags it takes, you know. And don't question. I mean, don't get, don't start doubting. No, you never doubt. You <laughs> don't never doubt. doubt. <laughs> just trust. Trust that it's on its way to the point. <laughs> so uh-huh. if I can interject. Um, one of the things I noticed when I was when I was manifesting my house, yeah, actually both houses in, that I that I did this with, but this one I really noticed it. It was really conscious when I was doing it. Um, I I had, was getting it all figured. It was all moving and everything. Everything was happening. Found the house. I mean, they dropped it in my lap and all this stuff was happening. And then we were just trying to get the financing. Okay, that was moving, and then all of a sudden everything just stopped. And I was just so frustrated, and I kept trying to find different ways of getting the financing. And it was just like all this. And I'm going, what on earth? I was just so, fr- I was so anxious, and I was going crazy trying to, you know, why is not this happening? Why is not this happening? Then I looked at myself. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. This is my creation. What am I doing? And this is kind of like co-creating or, or create whatever, 102. We were doing 101. Now we're doing 102, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and I, started, I looked at myself, and I realized I was having questioning thoughts. I was starting to wonder if I could afford the house and if I could handle this new responsibility and, uh, and going down thoughts like that. So, see, I was questioning my own creation, myself, and so it made everything stop. You were putting some blocks up. Yes. Well, once I realized that, then it was like, well, wait a minute. If I can create this, and, if, and if, if it's given to me, there will also be a way for me to afford it be given to me. All of the place, all the things that I will need will also be there. And so that's what I started, you know, I kept reassuring that, reaffirming that, bam, 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 bam. It all started moving again. It all happened really quickly. Once, But I had to get me straight. So that's one of the, if your creations aren't, you know, if they're, if they're hitting roadblocks or whatever, Look at yourself. <laughs> look with them. Look yes. inside because that's where you're the creator and yes. look at yourself. Absolutely. You are creating everything. Nobody's doing it to you. Nobody's mucking up the work. You are because of something you're thinking. <laughs> so uh-huh. go within and figure it out. It's self-doubt probably. So, Well, like she was saying a while ago, this whole thing of letting them handle it and sit back and watch that's so much easier than sitting around worry, worry, worry. How mm-hmm. am I going to get the money to do this? How am I going to be able mm-hmm. to afford it? Oh, how am I going to make it happen? Then you're worrying. 
it's so much easier to just give it over to them and say, okay, guys. Yeah. And then, then it becomes fun. Well, it does, and that's another thing I noticed. Um, um, you know, money's flowing and it's all going and everything, and then all of a sudden maybe something comes in it's a little overwhelming and it's like, oh, my God, or, or, or money will start getting tight and stuff, and I was going, oh, my God, what's, you know, what's going on? What's going on? And I realized my, again, myself, I realized my body signs are like, so right now I'm clenching my fists, and that's usually what I'm doing at the point I'm getting anxious and I'm tensing up. Well, what happens when you do that? The energy isn't flowing. <laughs> so what you have to do is you open your hands and just go, ah, and let yourself relax. That lets that energy move again, and guess what? Every time I do that, all of a sudden that money starts moving again. I mean, it's like I won't know where it's going to come from. It just starts moving, mm-hmm. and it's all, but every single time, if it starts getting tight, it's, that, it's me clamping down, you know? So these are important. <laughs> this is what happens with our company. Yes, absolutely. And we usually have a deadline. We have to have a certain amount of money by a certain mm-hmm. date. Publishing books is expensive. Yes. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yes. And it used to be worry. But now, the one thing wrong, it'll usually come up right oh, to the day. To the penny to the day. <laughs> and it will always give us exactly what we need. Mm-hmm. And I say, guys, couldn't you pad it a little bit? Well, that's what we're going to – I think that's going to be co-creating 103 or 4 or 5 or something. We're going to pad it. <laughs> they say, so. you're giving it to us, but they said, well, this is what you asked exactly. for. This is what we're giving you. Exactly. But mm-hmm. it'll come in, you know, you start getting a little anxious, but it'll come in exactly at the right time. Yes. Mm-hmm. But, again, it's by not being – Anxious about it, not being tight in your energy field. You've got, you, you open your hands and you relax with it, and it flows. So if you're having a tight spell out there and you don't know where that money's coming from, let go of it. Let loose. Let your hands open up and just feel it. You'll feel immediately when you do that. You'll feel an ease and a flow of energy. And as soon as you do that, you say, I don't know where it's coming from, but I know I'm okay. And it all flips around. See, your guides and guardian angels are there to help you. That's their job. If, but they say they can't help you if you don't ask for assistance. So they're some of the ones we bring in sometimes, right. too. And all you have to do is ask, and they'll do miracles for you. Mm-hmm. But here again, it is just sometimes ex- just exactly well, what you want. But let's go back to those statements already there. We already created it. It's on this other level. So it's just it's just sitting there waiting for us to match it in vibration. So start thinking in equality to whatever it is. You know, if it's that money or whatever, think yourself in equality with it. You're on the same vibration, and it will be immediately in your sight. Well, one of the things that's come out in my sessions, one woman wanted to know, to ask them during this session, why can't I hold on to money? Mm -hmm. Money is energy, like everything else is energy. And they said, you're not supposed to hold on to it. It's supposed to come and go. Mm -hmm. Once you realize Mm -hmm. that, that's what Mm -hmm. you're saying. Release it and just let it happen. Well, it's mainly it's the release of the energy, of the the thought of it. Because it's like, yeah, it's like you feel like you can hang. But I'm not hanging on anything here, but I am to that energy of it. Because if I get tense. It stops the flow of the energy of the money. Yeah. And so, if yeah, it's like let go of that need to hold on to it. It doesn't mean go out and go, bleh, you know, go crazy spending money. I mean, it might. I don't know. But well, you'll be guided as to what to do. Whatever, whatever you'd learn from right, that. You know, yeah. But sometimes it does mean, you know, go ahead and donate something. Maybe just a little, just to show that you're confident in the flow of money to you. I know I can give this because I know I'll get it back tenfold. You know, yeah, so it's okay. Yes. But some examples, I had a friend who wanted a certain car. And she wrote all these things down. It helps if you can have a picture, too, right. put on your mm-hmm. refrigerator or whatever it is you want. You can look at it every day. She knew the car she wanted. She knew the year. She knew the model. She even had the color. She wanted a yellow car. She had the price, everything exactly the way she wanted to have this car. So she created it, and she got her car. But she left out one little thing. What was that? It didn't run. Oh. <laughs> uh, you would think that would be a given. <laughs> but that's what I mean about every little tiny detail. Well, that might be why it's important to see yourself driving the car with the wind <laughs> blowing through your hair. And that it is running. <laughs> yes. But, see, sometimes you've got to think of all these little details. 
And another woman, here we're going to the emotional things, right. wanted a man in her life. Yeah. And she wrote down all of the wonderful qualities of what she wanted. Mm-hmm. The uh, the kind of a personality mm-hmm. she wanted, what he looked like. He right. was going to be good to her. He would have the same interests. She wrote down all of the things that what he, you know, everything about him that she wanted. She created her man. And then she put it out into the universe and was waiting to see what would happen. Well, yeah, she found the man. Problem was, he was married. Mm. <laughs> so she said, "Okay, I got to go back to my drawing board again and do it again." Yeah. So this time she put down single. Yeah. And all of her <laughs> or little, available or something. <laughs> <laughs> all the qualifications. Mm-hmm. So she got her second man. He was ten years younger than her, but she said, "That's okay. I can live with that." Yeah. <laughs> so you have to be exact on what it is you want. Right. You have to know. Otherwise, you're just, you know, you're just taking whatever gets thrown. It's like being in a restaurant. If you can't tell the server exactly what it is you would like to eat, you say, oh, just give me something that's good. Well, see, that's the unconscious living. But, you know, you, can, you don't have any right to complain about it once you get it because you didn't specify. And, and just like many of us will be very specific about what we order. I mean, we will go down to the nth detail. <laughs> I want it cooked this way with only, you know, whatever. Do it the same way. You know what you want. You know what feels good to you. You you know. So do we it learned, that way. We learned that in Russia about <laughs> ordering, <laughs> and we didn't know what we were getting. Uh, but that's the thing. You have to have it exactly as what you want. Uh, well, I, I read that in a book one time where they said we don't have any problem ordering in a restaurant. Why Why do we have a problem ordering for our life? You know, and it's really get it down to that basic thing. You this is your life, and you're ordering for it. Get. Do what you want. What is it you really want? You know, you're the one that's responsible for it. If you want a job, see yourself doing that job. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two restrictions on when you're creating Mm -hmm. that you have to be careful of so you won't create karma. Mm -hmm. Okay, two restrictions when you create anything. You never create anything that's going to harm anyone. Right. It always must be for the positive. Because everything you send out is going to come back to you tenfold. Yeah. So you don't want to take away from anyone. Yeah, I was going to say mm-hmm. that next. First, oh, that's number two? Yeah. Oh, I thought the oh, okay. First one <laughs> is you don't um, you harm. don't do anything to harm anyone. The second one is you never take away from anybody else. If you want a job, you don't put out there, this person is going to be fired so I can get their job. Or, or another way, I wouldn't even say, that you, you just don't say, I want that job, because then it might be that person gets fired for you to get that job. That's you not know, good. You're not necessarily saying, I want that person to be fired so I can have that job. You may be saying and thinking quite innocently, I want that job. But then not realizing, well, in order for you to have that job, that person has to be removed. So your your better solution would be... Well, what usually happens is a job is created just for you. There wasn't a mm-hmm. job there before. Right, right. And you've had that happen yes, in your I own have. life. Yes, I have. Uh-huh. Or another thing might be that, like you said, for the highest good, it could be that that job might be the right one for you, but that person gets elevated to a better position for them for you to have it too. So whatever it is, it's for everybody's highest good. Yeah. And so, so you don't want to ever use the power of your mind to harm anyone yeah or to take away from anybody else. I was thinking your second one was going to be like when you're working on something with some, like a, like a, getting a, someone in your life, you don't attach a, a person to it. No, because not, that creates I want karma. that man right. or I want that woman. Right, because it's, it, everybody has free will, and so you put the characteristics out there, and then the best person that fits all of that is who enters in, who steps up yeah. to bat, rather than saying, oh, yeah, I want that specific person well, it may not be in there. Maybe free they will. don't. Exactly. Want you. Exactly. And then you're creating all kinds of uh, imbalances and everything yeah. by doing that. And you may, and it may not be the best person for you, <laughs> you know. And so this is mm-hmm. powerful stuff. Once you learn how to use it, and your mind is powerful enough, you can have anything you want. It's the law of the universe. Mm-hmm. But just be careful how you use it. Just like anything, any power. Mm-hmm. Be careful the way you you send it out. Well, uh, uh, intent. Intent. Intent goes out ahead of you, and if you always have the highest intent or the best intent of the highest good, that always goes out ahead of you. And so that way you don't have to get all freaky about, oh, am I doing it right, doing it wrong. Your intent 
tells the whole story. So, you don't want to have a lot of money just for greed. Well, you you have it for whatever it is you ha- want it for. I mean, yeah, if you you know you've got to deal with yourself on why the whys and wherefores of it. We're just dealing with with co-creation right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's where you've got to examine yourself anyway. But that's why I tell people material things are the easiest thing for you to get. You just have to look at it that way. Use the power of your mind. Be able to visualize what you want. See it. See people in the picture. See them talking. Hear things. See things happening. Uh This makes it come alive. Right. Movement and everything. And then you put it out, and it has to happen, and it will. And And that's the other thing that you keep saying is, this must happen. This must happen. See, that's showing you're trusting the universe to give it to you. Again, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you're going to do it, and then I'm going to stand back and watch, see what you do. Those are all ways that you are trusting the whole process. Then you don't go back and say, well, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? I put it out. Mm-hmm. You just release it, let mm-hmm. it go, and allow it to happen. Yeah, because you can actually kill it by, by constantly checking on it. <laughs> yeah, they so. said that's doubt. Yes, absolutely. When you do that, just release mm-hmm. it and then sit back. Then when it comes, it's going to be a surprise. Just know it's done. Know you have it and be excited. (laughs) Okay, well, we're coming to the time now that we're going to have to leave again. That went kind of fast. I never know what we're going to talk about, but that's the way it went. That's always a fun topic. (laughs) Yeah, it is. And uh, I think a lot of you, this might help you. All right, but if anybody wants to know anything about uh, our schedules, Mm -hmm. Speaking schedules, the uh, classes that are coming up. Our next class is going to be in Hawaii in uh, February. Right. And we're going to have one in Arkansas in March. All of our April. schedules. April. April. Mm-hmm. We're doing something else in March. Yeah. But everything that's going to be happening is on our website. And if you want to know about sessions, if you want to know about the books, the name of the company is Ozark Mountain Publishing, and it's abbreviated on our website, so it's O-Z-A-R-K-M-T dot com, or if you're overseas, it's O-Z-A-R-K-M-T dot com, or call the office at 1-800-935-0045. Another website that works is DoloresCannon dot com. Oh, okay. spelling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So good night, everybody, and Merry mm-hmm. Christmas. Create a great one. (laughs) Good night. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.